Hello there. Good morning, everybody. My name is Uttam Shah, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing at JK Technosoft, and I'm your host for today's webinar. So we are very excited to bring out an elite customer and partner panel to present to you an innovative approach to detect and stop the cybersecurity threats in real time. So as a part of this webinar, we are going to showcase the power of artificial intelligence combined with machine learning and dynamic threat models to deliver real-time security to you by protecting your business against dangerous threats and defending it against costly cyber attacks. Housekeeping. So please type in your questions in the Q&A window on your type right-hand side. We have approximately 30 minutes between three speakers, followed by 10 minutes of question and answer session. So without much ado, let me hand it over to our first panelist, Secure Designs Business Development Executive and Security Expert, Eric Berger. Eric, over to you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I uh, thought I'd begin with a word or two about SDI. Uh, we're a managed security service provider, or MSSP. Uh, we operate the largest sonic wall GMS uh, deployment in the world with over 8,000 client locations. We've been in the security business for about 15 years, uh, primarily serving the small and medium-sized business market through uh, internet service provider, uh, private label partners. We're excited to have just signed on uh, an agreement uh, with Secion to provide OTM as a much needed enhancement to the existing solutions we deploy. So uh, let's begin. Uh, and it can be said that not enough top level executives in businesses of all sizes don't realize the true nature of the threat from cybercrime. And we'll talk about that uh, more later. But there's no dispute that cybersecurity is becoming or already is top of mind for everyone, no matter what your job title is or the size of your organization. Cybercrime is a crime of opportunity. We use the analogy here at SDI when we talk to our SMB clients that the bad guys operate like thieves in a parking garage going from level to level looking for unlocked cars. But if your car is fancy enough, there are thieves that will find out how to get in and most likely steal it. You can also imagine larger enterprises and corporations as a truck filled with valuable goods. The bottom line is car alarms and door locks aren't the whole solution anymore. So uh, today we're going to touch on uh, a new approach that uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to proactively detect and stop cyber criminals. And we'll also share some uh, real world case examples. So why should CXOs, CEOs pay attention to cybersecurity? Well, uh, we're all somewhat aware of the repercussions of a successful intrusion that results in data theft or intellectual property or both. Uh, at SBI, you know, we take a holistic approach to security. Uh, security is a goal, uh, but there's no such thing as a state of 100% total security, especially now. Uh, but the polar opposite of security is paranoia. Uh, and in this case, a little paranoia is a good thing. Uh, I suppose it's possible to be 100% paranoid, but in terms of cybersecurity or any other way, it's probably not good for business. Uh, so here listed are a few of the reasons to think a little bit on the side of paranoia in terms of the cost of uh, a successful data breach. Uh, lost data, impact, reputation and brand, business revenue, uh, customers and partners liability, uh, the hefty costs, of course, and, you know, bottom line to think about uh, from this slide is your cyber defense strategy and plan, because you do have to have a plan, impacts everyone you connect with, including your customers, partners, and employees. And when you suffer, so do they. So let's look at that cost uh, a little bit more uh, in general terms. And, and talk about some specific numbers. We're usually talking about an overall cost, and uh, the commercial cost of data breaches is tracked by the Poneman Institute, 
And that cost is increasing exponentially. As of uh, mid-2016, it was estimated to be $4 million per data breach. This cost is highest for the healthcare industry, uh, many others, uh, education, the financial industry, uh, credit card companies, they're not far behind uh, in the aggregate. And we predict this will continue to rise over the next few years uh, as trend in the Internet of Things uh, opens up new vulnerabilities and the attack surface continues to expand everywhere, mobile devices, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, there is no more perimeter, and it's getting more difficult than ever to protect everything. So what kind of threats uh, are we looking at that's uh, triggering these costs and, and making us all feel a little bit paranoid, hopefully? Uh, another survey by Poneman uh, ranks the kinds of threats that executives are worried about. And to sum up, we have met the enemy, and he is us. Phishing and insider threats are right there at the top because humans are the weakest part of the network. Some progress is being made, but there's still a lot of people, and millennials are the largest part of this group, that will click on anything. And email filters will never be 100% effective, especially if it's socially engineered or it involves stolen credentials or a fisher masquerading as the accounting department with questions about your expense report. Of course, the most effective method to steal data or bring down the network uh, are those initiated by people that know what's valuable and know the network, which is your own employees. So it's important to note that phishing is the number one method of delivering ransomware. And practically every security expert across the board predicts a ransomware explosion in 2017. The true truth is that there are uh, known threats to worry about, but we face a world of unknown threats each and every day. Truth number two is, it's not a question of if, but when. So uh, let's look at actual events now and what are the challenges that we're facing as, as we view this cost and revel in our, our slight case of paranoia. A couple of metrics uh, followed by many uh, establish the mean time to identify and the mean time to contain the data breach. And this is extremely important uh, because if anything bad happens, and it will happen eventually no matter uh, what preparations you take and what your plan is, uh, the overriding concern is to mitigate it as soon as possible and nip it in the bud before uh, it can cause damage or limit the scope of that damage. So uh, the Ponemon report shows that for all different threats, everything on the list that we've recently seen, the metrics are very bad. You know, it's almost six months or more to investigate completely, and even worse, two months or more to completely contain the threat after it's been known to cause a data breach. And what's the primary reason for this? It's lack of expertise, a lack of integration among security tools, and most importantly, a lack of automation to work in real time. Just like the human factor uh, is our greatest weakness, it's also the greatest factor in li limiting our effectiveness in mitigating threats uh, because humans can only react and put things together uh, in, a, in, a, in a limited amount of time. So where do security products fall short? Top line, it's important to point out that almost all of the methods and solutions for identifying and mitigating intrusions simply don't work well enough. And this is increasingly true, even though more money than ever is being spent. And there's no end in sight uh, to that trend. Why is that? Fundamentally, it's because the bad guys will always have the initiative. Security products are reactive by nature. We can't ever specifically predict how and when the next attack will occur. Most security products and solutions follow a reactive approach of incident investigation, and they include response, but it inherently involves a lot of human effort, and a result is it's nowhere close to being mitigated in real time, you know, before the damage has a chance to occur. Uh, the chart below is from a Verizon data breach investigation report uh, which includes most public and private data breach incidents out of more than 10,000 plus incidents 
They found that almost 75% were primarily related to some form of compromised credentials or insider threat. In almost all of these cases, the credentials were stolen within minutes and the data was lost within a day. So for any solution to be effective in stopping and mitigating threats, limiting the damage, limiting the cost, it has to work in real time. Operational cost of investigations. We're talking about investments in security products going up and up, and that's internal and external. Let's, let's quickly walk through an example of a malware-infected endpoint device to get a sense of what's come into play. In this particular instance, uh, Secchion found there were a large number of next-generation firewall logs, which was indicating a connection from this endpoint to an external black site big red flag. Although it was resetting the connection, there was not necessarily sufficient information to conclude that the endpoint was infected with malware. But if a security staff investigates the network traffic and finds out there were other correlated activities, such as endpoint performing IP sweeps, and port scans to other vulnerable devices, then you can pretty quickly conclude that there's some type of malware infection. Something's in there, and it's trying to do stuff right away. But identifying all this east-west activity and locating the device itself is a real challenge. It takes a lot of human effort, and that human effort comes at a very expensive price. You're looking at, uh, on average, three or more events at $500 per incident, assuming a junior analyst is doing the investigating. And looking at three incidents per business day, you can see how the cost of these investigations is jumping up very, very high. Uh, the human model costs a lot, and that's the most important thing to remember about current solutions, is that they're not working, and in order to make them work, there's a lot of costs involved because of the human element. So that wraps up my portion, and at this time, I'd like to hand it over to Lalit Shinda, who's the EVP of security at Sakyan. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, good, good afternoon, uh, everyone across the globe. Um, so when we looked at uh, this cybersecurity issue at Sakyan, uh, we knew that there has to be a better way, a uh, better way to solve these problems. In fact, we looked at all of the security solutions that are available very carefully, and we were completely taken aback at uh, the current approaches. Uh, most of these traditional security products, uh, they're very highly specialized. They work very well in silos, but most of the time they're completely blind to compromise credentials or insider threats uh, or advanced persistent threats. And as a result, we knew that there has to be a better way to solve this problem using current technologies. Most of the uh, times, also, these tools generate uh, lots of threat indicators, lots of logs and events for you, uh, you to look at in order to determine uh, if a certain threat is real or not. And this requires a large human effort as Eric pointed out, it gets very difficult to then figure out what is the white noise and what is the real threat. Uh, and as the determination itself takes uh, so much time, uh, the problem of remediation becomes even more, uh, uh, even more challenging. The second OTM leverages completely different approach uh, using predictive analysis. It uses unmatched combination of behavioral analysis, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and dynamic threat intelligence to detect known as well as threats that could be completely new uh, in a very proactive manner and provides you the ability to stop or contain the threat in an automated manner. Today's cybersecurity threats demand an automated approach that can stop the threats before they can cause any damage. And this is where SECAN is unique to most of the other tools. The three distinguishing features of this platform, it delivers 
rich visibility to how the organization behaves uh, by showing you a bird's eye view of all of its different assets and how these asset groups communicate with each other, uh, both from functional level all the way uh, up to you know individual devices, employees, databases, and applications. So it shows you all of those interactions and gives you an ability within a click or two to drill down to all of the details available uh, available at that time. The threads can be very quickly overlay on top of this in order to view which asset groups are more vulnerable or have weaknesses, and you can pinpoint exactly what those uh, weaknesses are. Secondly, the solution uses a holistic detection of threats uh, that matter by correlating all of the various threat indicators with proper context into single line alerts, uh, which are very easy to understand and work on. And this is where it adds a lot of operational efficiency to your organization by providing security analysts the, the ability to debug something very quickly and determine if it is a real threat or not. The alerts can be further drilled down from this view to get all of the details of which assets are involved, which applications, which endpoints, um, and even which databases. Uh, <clears throat> what are various events that could cause, uh, uh, that, that involve these various threat indicators in order to uh, cause this particular alert to show up. And it also takes away that human effort of uh, correlating thousands of different uh, threat indicators together uh, by showing you all of that in a single line uh, uh, alert message. And finally, what is the use of showing you the real alerts if we cannot be stopped, if those cannot be stopped in real time? And this is where Secure OTM is uniquely positioned compared to many other security products where it provides an integrated threat remediation capability in real time by recommending appropriate action and allowing those actions to be taken through automated scripts, clearly indicating the impact to the organization so that a decision can be made quickly and minimal uh, organization disruption will happen as a part of this, but the threat itself will be prevented or contained uh, from causing any damage to the organization. It can also alert the security team through text messages and emails so that they don't need to sit in front of the uh, system to monitor this. Uh, there's no uh, nothing to worry about until that email or text message come uh, in order to take the action. The second OTM is truly a, a sock in a box uh, solution. And uh, we'll be happy to provide a lot more details and demo uh, to those who are interested. Let's talk about uh, why this architecture is also scalable and uh, can be applied to not only uh, MSSB kind of uh, uh, deployments where a lot of the small and medium-sized businesses can be uh, secured using this technology, but it can also be applied to large enterprises with multiple sites and multiple different locations. It is built with a scalable architecture with multi-tenancy support. Um, the large Fortune 500 can scale it across their multiple sites, multiple data centers, campuses across the globe by using this uh, technology. There are two distinct applications within this platform. The control and collection engine, and this is the one that can digest all forms of structured and unstructured data, uh, logs, network flows, even a raw IP package. And the scalable analytics and policy engine called APE. Uh, this is modeled after uh, the latest and greatest streaming technology uh, to run various behavioral analytics models, machine learning algorithms, dynamic threat intelligence algorithms, as well as the correlation engine uh, in parallel. The correlation engine is you know, the important part of the automation to reduce that operational overload on the security team. And it also provides easier to understand single line alerts with ability to navigate through all the details and the threat indicators. 
the API is pretty much processing all of this in uh, real time in uh, microseconds by providing the quick turnaround and taking the remediation action before the damage is done uh, to the organization. So the input to the output is pretty much within seconds uh, it's happening in parallel correlating various things uh, that have happened in the past. So at this time, let me hand it over to Kevin Stillman, who is the Chief Information Security Officer with State University of New York, uh, to take us through some of the real-world examples. Kevin? Thank you very much, Lily. So I uh, work for the State University of New York. Um, SUNY is a 64-campus system in New York State. Uh, we enroll about 450,000 students with 90,000 employees. Uh, what uh, one of the initiatives I'm working on is a distributed uh, security operations center of approach for uh, the various campuses. Um, SUNY campuses kind of range in their ability to um, operate uh, an information security program, uh, you know, based on various uh, funding. Uh, so what we're trying to do is uh, level set that across the board for the smaller campuses and community colleges. And uh, Sekian's uh, sock in a box approach is uh, intriguing for this. Uh, we've been looking at them for the past several months. Um, I'm going to talk about some use cases um, for the Sekian OTM solution. Uh, we're going to start by talking about compromised credentials. Um, so we, we chose compromised credentials use case to demonstrate as almost 75% of data theft in 2015 and 2016 happened because of this. There's been just a little bit of international news lately about stolen emails and, and that kind of thing. So unless you've been living under a rock, uh, you should know about all of this. Uh, most traditional security tools are blind to compromised credentials as well as inside threats. Sekion OTM can protect your users and data from the use of compromised credentials by both external and internal sources, and it can do it in real time. So let us consider a typical enterprise where an employee is accessing various databases, running various applications to do her day-to-day -day -day work. In this example, we are comparing the Sekion OTM solution with a traditional SIM platform, but the story is the same. Uh, if you replace the SIM platform with other security tools out there. So in this first instance, as the credentials are valid, both the SIM and OTM detect no threat. But during this time, Sekion OTM is learning and baselining the user's behavior as she interacts with the databases, understanding the times of login, the duration that she's connected, geographic locations where she's accessing data from, what computer she's using, and what applications are running, all that kind of thing. Now let's say the user's credentials are stolen, and this could happen in a multiple different ways through a phishing attack. Uh, that's the most common and prevalent way. And let us say the rogue entity accesses the databases using these valid credentials. At this time, as the credentials are valid, the SIM platform will not detect any threat. OTM will see that there is some anomaly based on the computer used, or the time of the login, or the geographic location. At this time, it's going to raise a minor threat indicator, uh, but OTM is observing this connection very carefully uh, for additional suspicious activity. The threat indicator is minor, as it could be just the same trusted user connecting from an internet cafe or at a friend's computer while they're on vacation or something like that. All of those are valid scenarios. In those cases, the threat indicator will remain minor, which is important because most SIM tools tend to inundate their operators with uh, false positive data, uh, and too much data means it's less valuable. Um, OTM minimizes false positives. But if this is an indeed a, a rogue entity, they will start doing things like probing the network, running new applications, accessing higher number of assets, including those rarely accessed by the actual user, uh, including tar uh, high value target databases or extract, extracting uh, large numbers of files. So OTM's threat detection algorithms, as well as machine learning, will catch and correlate any suspicious activity around this user and this activity. And this will immediately raise the threat indicator level to either major or critical. At this point, an alert will be issued and a recommended remediation action is executed or the required security folks are alerted by email or text with instructions on how to stop the threat. 
So the next use case we want to talk about is ransomware. Uh, ransomware is definitely on the rise and it's become a preferred tool of choice by criminal hackers to quickly and with relative ease make money off of inattentive victims. Uh, just the publicly known ransomware cases have cost U.S. companies about $1 billion in 2016. And a lot of ransomware is now targeting small and medium-sized businesses. So most of the times, ransomware starts with a phishing email where the victim clicks on an innocuous looking link and voila, they're connected to a bad reputation site. Clicking on the emails or visiting a website is not a threat unless the threat intelligence can confidently point out the blacklisted URL. At this point, the ransomware sites will download the criminal malware from itself and one of its sister sites once the victim clicked on it. Sekian's machine learning algorithms will catch this activity and raise this as a major threat indicator. Once the ransomware is downloaded, the next thing the malware will do is to establish the contact with the command and control site in order to download the public encryption keys. Sekian's threat models will immediately correlate this to the download activity that pre preceded before the raise before and raise a critical alert by sending an email notification, as well as pushing policy to the next generation firewall in order to stop any further communication to the external command and control site. This will stop the ransomware from causing any damage. Sekian OTM can catch and protect the endpoint device on the server as long as it's in the organization's network, but it can't but it can get infected while it's outside or employer or contractor may bring an infected personal device into the organization's network. In those cases, the ransomware is trying to look for a high-value asset target. It would start scanning the network for those vulnerable assets, and any such activity will raise an alert based on Sekian's threat models and machine learning algorithms. The severity of these threats will depend on the malware application's behavior. Once the ransomware starts to propagate itself, Sekian's threat models will immediately catch it and raise a critical alert and isolate the endpoint device from communicating with any other devices on the network. It will stop all east-west propagation of the ransomware and notify the security personnel through emails or texts. Note that most of the ransomware activity is east-west traffic and completely bypasses next-generation firewalls, and next-generation antivirus solutions cannot catch it either as there are millions of different strains of it coming out almost every single day. So with that, I can hand it back over to our moderator, Tom, and open up the webinar for questions. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so we will be now opening up the session for question and answer. Please feel free to type in your questions using the Q&A icon on the right-hand side, top right-hand side of your box. So I can see a couple of questions which have come in now. Uh, so I think there's a question for uh, our customers. So if you can, one of you can take it. The question is, what are some of the real threats found by this platform in your deployment? I guess um, I, yeah, I can address that first. Um, you know, we we first uh, were introduced to Sekian at the uh, global meeting for um, SonicWall, uh, you know, the, the firewall solution uh, provider, which is a major player in the market, uh, aimed at a very uh, small, medium, but also large market. But uh, cost effectiveness is one of their hallmarks. But uh, they've got a very effective solution that we have in deployment, you know, as I mentioned, in 8,000 locations. So uh, we entered in, our CTO entered into a conversation with Sekian, and we actually deployed uh, the collection unit and uh, APE here, you know, in our data center. And lo and behold, uh, just a few weeks later, there was an employee who, in the shipping department, uh, who got a uh, phishing email. Uh, that she clicked on, and it immediately uh, began illustrating the example that was just shown uh, by Kevin. Uh, contacted a blacklisted site. Uh, and there was uh, uh, suspicious malware activity uh, going on. The Sekion unit flagged it exactly uh, as it was uh, portrayed uh, by Kevin. And our CTO was made aware of it almost immediately. 
uh, the email and text. Our network operations people uh, jumped into action. And within the space of 20 minutes, uh, we had it laterally disabled. And within the space of 20 minutes, we had it completely uh, sandboxed and eradicated. Now, had we not had that solution in place, you know, I'll, I'll just say that in our data center, we've got uh, uh, a high availability set up of two top of line next generation firewalls. Uh, but for some reason, you know, this east-west activity was not flagged. And uh, we're in the business of providing security for uh, 8,000 customers and through some very large uh, customers of ours, direct customers, ISPs that, that are white-label partners. And, you know, for us to suffer a breach, you know, in this way that could have permeated in all sorts of ways, you know, I, I think this is a relatively simplistic, you know, it was the same sort of thing that a uh, smaller, medium-sized business might click on. But had this been more pernicious, had it been a network worm combined with ransomware that was trying to infect all endpoint devices and, and go through our, uh, our data center and establish itself in the portal that we maintain for all of our customers, uh, then it could have been you know, extremely dangerous, if not uh, fatal, to the reputation of our company. So, you know, I'd have to say that that incident alone kind of sold us on the efficacy of the solution. And uh, probably the major region that, that I'm so excited about it today, because uh, the solution came very close to home and uh, saved our bacon in that regard. So thank you, Eric. Uh, that was uh, good. I think uh, there's another question uh, uh, which, uh, which says, you know, how does CQ on platform help in reducing the operations cost? I could help on that one. Um, you know, like I was saying, um, this is Kevin Stillman. Uh, we were, uh, we've been running a proof of concept of Secion in um, our, data, our data center here in Albany, New York. Um, we, you know, Secion is a good low cost solution. Um, you know, there's a lot of value in the product from what um, I've seen so far. Um, we had a, um, a server administrator who was working within our environment here, and he was uh, working on a server that's on a, a remote data center. It's one of our sister data centers. And uh, that, that data center has a, uh, a Dell SecureWorks instance. Uh, you know, they invested pretty heavily into, into uh, you know, their, their security infrastructure. Um, and they, they pay for the monitoring and so on and so forth. So this is the remote data center that, um, that um, someone from our location was accessing a server at. Um, so this communication was going through, of course, our infrastructure outbound, and it was being um, you know, sent over to Secion for analysis. Um, the, um, the server administrator was doing, um, he, he was doing some port scanning, uh, basically. He was looking to see if uh, what ports were open on this particular VM that he had uh, at that other location. Um, and that was immediately detected by Secion, and it was it provided, uh, you know, our, our operations folks an alert. Um, it also, it did alert the Dell SecureWorks folks, but it took probably a good four or five hours before a phone call was generated um, about that alert. So it's just an, it's an intriguing story uh, to the benefit of Secion. Uh, you know, it was it was this this uh, you know activity was seen, and it was alerted on immediately. It was all done localized within the Secion instance here, um, and uh, you know it was fortunately for us it was uh, kind of an innocuous thing, but um, it, it did show that the product works. I'll just jump on that for a second in that, um, you know, we've operated a network operations center, a NOC, you know, for very many years. And, you know, in the industry, you know, the, the SOC, you know, the, the, uh, the ultimate expression of inter intervention and mitigation has been out of reach for us to provide because uh, due to the cost of the personnel and the amount of threats they'd have to mitigate, uh, you know, per, per analyst, we just can't cost-effectively provide that solution like we're able to cost-effectively provide uh, the services through our NOC. Uh, most of our customers in the aggregate you know, wouldn't pay uh, for that. 
Uh, so it's been a real challenge for us, and uh, you know we put a lot of investment into you know developing solutions, you know the best type of proactive solutions or reactive solutions that we can. Uh, but what Secion does, it, it allows one single analyst through one pane of glass uh, to monitor 500 clients at a time because the, the machine learning and the automation is so good, uh, it can recognize the real threats. It can flag what seems to be a threat, but the real threats uh, are red flagged and passed through according to uh, the, the sense of urgency. And, uh, your your knock can become a sock. You know, you can take a couple of people in your network operations center and make them the intervention uh, experts. So uh, it, it's a very handy tool. Uh, uh, the term that that we're using for our clients is that uh, Secion has weaponized our network operations center, and, and that's very true. Thank you, Kevin and Rory. Um, that's good. Uh, I think there's one interesting question here. So how, how does this platform handle zero-day threats? Do you know about zero-day threats? Can anybody take it? Sure, yeah. Uh, let me uh, take that uh, uh, with them. Uh, uh, this is Lalit Chinde again from Sakyan. Um, uh, before I answer that, let me just thank uh, uh, JK Technosoft for uh, hosting this webinar as well as uh, my co-panelists, uh, customers of Sakyan, uh, for you know joining us and taking this time to uh, to do this uh, webinar. Uh, so on the zero day, uh, this question gets asked to us many times: on how will you detect uh, the zero day threats? And a lot of the times the answer is uh, there is a lot more uh, new threads or unknown threads uh, that you can uh, uh, figure out, uh, but many a times it requires uh, machine learning to process a lot of the things quickly in order to determine what are the uh, real uh, good behaviors from based on you know peer clustering based on your application clustering and databases clustering uh, versus uh, what is abnormal and human intelligence uh, goes uh, much much deeper but it takes a very time consuming uh, effort in order to determine that and with machine learning and the dynamic threat models working together, uh, the second OTM platform does this pretty much in real time. So even if you have uh, zero-day malware or zero-day botnets uh, uh, or you know other uh, low-lying applications that were not supposed to run uh, or uh, um, other uh, advanced persistent threats in the systems uh, uh, as a part of the zero-day. A lot of these will be surfaced uh, within first day itself by second OTM. The machine learning aspect, though, you know, does take time. It does take uh, usually a week uh, to learn uh, the organization's behavior, the pattern, and uh, determine the clustering and uh, surface those anomalies. Uh, but within probably a week to two weeks time frame, you would get almost all of the zero-day uh, threats uh, surfaced to the uh, surface as uh, alerts. If they are if they're causing any harm to the organization, you will know. Thanks, Lalit. Uh, I think there's a couple of more questions. I think the questions are still coming in. So there's another uh, question uh, about the platform. Is there any, you know, have, have any industry analysts, you know, uh, evaluated this platform and what kind of comparisons are available? If you can, you know, is there any, are there any pointers you can provide, please? Yeah, great, uh, great question. Um, so SIC and OTM, uh, as um, uh, Eric pointed out, uh, and also, you know, I think Kevin mentioned that, that uh, the product is out uh, uh, at the beginning of last year, and it has gone through a lot of the analyst uh, evaluation and comparisons. Uh, we have uh, at least four or five different analysts evaluating this product, and almost all of them when they compared with SIEM platforms or other existing solutions in Nexion endpoints or uh, uh, Nexion firewalls, they were a little bit taken aback on how do we compare this with other 
existing technologies. There is no something similar existing uh, that provides such a comprehensive uh, uh, mechanism of uh, combining machine learning, artificial intelligence, behavioral uh, analytics, and at the same time correlating those to give you uh, the real alerts uh, in real time. And not only that, also remediating that in the real time. Uh, so a lot of them have just put up the analyst reports um, talking about uh, how this can uh, help in various different ways, uh, but, uh, you know, sort of eluded from comparing it with, uh, uh, with everything. The Gartner also talked to us and they have evaluated the platform and uh, they decided that uh, they need to create a separate security category called security operations, analytics, and remediation. And uh, that discussion is still going on. They're creating this category, and uh, hopefully that category happens this, this year. Uh, we would be very, very um, uh, excited to take part in that uh, category and uh, show how SIC and OTM can uh, lead that category uh, right from the get-go. If anybody on the uh, attendees list is interested, please reach out to uh, Meghna uh, at JKT. Uh, we can supply uh, the analysis reports to you. Uh, Lalit, there is uh, another question uh, very important. Uh, so the question reads out, what does a deployment of this solution look like? So what components need to be put where? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so. Uh, from the deployment perspective, as we said, there are two uh, separate applications. Uh, the analytics and policy engine is the heart of the solution and can be deployed in your central data center uh, or your central corporate office uh, um, that, that has most of the, uh, uh, most of the IT corporate uh, uh, installed. Uh, the control and collection engine is um, a very lightweight uh, component and can be uh, installed at the same site itself for small to mid-sized organizations, uh, but it can also be distributed for large organizations for multiple sites uh, or for multiple data centers. Uh, the installation itself is typically an hour to two hour process, so it doesn't take uh, that long to install. Um, and the provisioning is pretty minimal on the platform itself. Most of the provisioning is really redirecting your network flows, uh, network uh, logs from firewall and other critical devices um, uh, from the servers uh, and from the Active Directory. And that provisioning could take um, you know, anywhere from one or two hours to a couple of days based on various teams involved. Uh, and so, and uh, once you have those redirected, you'll start saying um, the, the real, uh, real value in it. So I think, uh, Lalit, there is just uh, enough one minute for a last question, you know. So how does uh, Seacon OTM compare with other, you know, platforms like HP ArcSight? Could you just please try to conclude that faster? Thank you. Sure, yeah. Um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Uttam, uh, again. Um, uh, for this question. So this is, uh, you know, a very good question. HP Oxide, um, uh, in fact, one of our customers uh, did have HP Oxide uh, installed, and um, HP Oxide was giving them almost a million different uh, threat logs uh, every day. Uh, and with a, uh, the IT team of about 10 uh, engineers, uh, they were finding it uh, a little bit overwhelming to go through this information uh, in order to determine what is a real threat and what is just a white noise. Uh, when they uh, deployed SECAN OTM, uh, we actually found uh, 3 million threat indicators uh, within, within that first day. Uh, and that's mainly because you know, there were about 4.5 million devices Connecting, uh, connecting to this, and this, this, this was a higher education uh, university, um, uh, and because there were four and a half million devices from students, faculty, employees, contractors, and so on, uh, there were a lot of um, uh, threat indicators coming out of it. Uh, but because they can see a much comprehensive view, it could see that there was there was a lot more uh, threat indicators happening. 
Uh, but the power of second was uh, the correlation engine indicated out of this two, uh, two and a half to three million uh, threat indicators, there were only 18 uh, or so real threat alerts that the team needed to uh, look at. And that 18 to 20 uh, threat alerts was much, much easier to manage uh, by this team uh, of the 10. And that was the power of the Sekian that they loved. Uh, and um, uh, they, they immediately sort of, you know, uh, bought into the solution. Uh, there are quite a few other uh, differences uh, with HP Oxide uh, and uh, uh, the few being remediation. HP Oxide, you know, will, will keep on giving you this kind of uh, uh, threat uh, indicators, but there's no uh, recommended remediation or automated remediation at all. And that's one thing that they can would do quickly is to, you know, either disable the credentials if that was the case or uh, isolate uh, the device where the malware is, uh, botnet is, or also block any uh, external uh, entities from causing DDoS kind of attacks, things like that it will do in real time in order to not only detect but also protect you immediately. Uh, so back to you, Untam. So I think I think we are uh, done. I think we have crossed two minutes over our specified time. So that brings to the end of this webinar session. Uh, for those, if you want to leave questions, we'll leave the chat window open for another five minutes. Or if you have any questions later, you can still email us at megna.jaswal at jkdeck.com and we'll come back to you with the answers. So uh, thank you all the attendees for sparing your valuable time today. And thank you, Eric, Kevin, and Lalit uh, for your outstanding you know, uh, sharing of thoughts. So we are also going to share a link uh, to download the video for your future reference. And good morning, and have a great day ahead. OK, then. Thank you. Bye-bye.